investigation. Ira Bevers is currently being held in the capital of Sonora. He was detained at the Lukeville Sonora border, and it's a three month long nightmare as Bevers reportedly forgot he had a gun in the car. Bevers gun was legally in Arizona, but Mexico has strict laws on firearms. On Friday, he was denied bond and sentenced to nearly three years in prison. Now with the help of Mexican attorneys, the family is appealing the court's decision. On a brighter note, we've got lots of sunshine and that will continue. But when will we see those clouds again? I'll let you know straight ahead in your first alert forecast. Looking for a familiar and friendly atmosphere? Look no further than Pirieria del Pueblo. We're a family-friendly restaurant. Our full bar cantina is perfect for hanging out with your buddies. At Pirieria del Pueblo, happy hour is all day, every day. Our brews pair perfectly with our mouth-watering nachos, loaded carne asada fries, and spicy wings. Try our authentic Jalisco recipes. Open all week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Pirieria del Pueblo, home of your favorite brews and stews. Those were the days. A little risk never scared us. Pants tight, plans loose. We cruise down drags with our favorite bands. We bought good times with loose quarters. And every night, we had standing dates with the same friends. Life was simpler back then. We hustled, we bumped, we bus stopped, and we smoked all the time. If that was you then, get your lungs screened now. Visit ScreenYourLungs.org today. A device. Some may consider a toy. One local man has used to make a name for himself. Radio Control Racing. It's more than just something you could do locally. You could go to races across the world. The sport has even taken him all the way to Australia. How he got in the game. And if there's any money in making it big. Our Lech Yusuf reports. Rolling Racers. Welcome back, everyone. Well, now for a look at our weather as we're joined by our, we by our weather forecaster, Scott Gross. Scott, you said yesterday that we should get ready for a warm-up, and I'm not happy about it, but how much warmer <laughs> will we get this week, and is there any chance of rain, at least for me? Okay, well, two <laughs> questions for you, and no chance of rain. Uh, you never want to say never, but I'm, I'm going to go on the, on the limb here and say never. Um, yeah, we're going to be quite warm, at least uh, anywhere between 8 and 10 degrees above our average, which is 82 degrees for this time of year, 83 in the Imperial Valley. So we're going to be in the low 90s for quite a stretch. So if you miss the 90s, they're going to be coming back. If you do not miss the 90s, they're going to be coming back. Yeah, we're going to be warm for a little while. Let's take a look outside, shall we? The RV World of Yuma Skycam. We're currently at 84 degrees right now in Yuma. We're at 88 in El Centro. Very busy downtown Yuma, that is 4th Avenue South. Slight haze off into the distance when you look at the mountains out there. And mostly sunny skies. We do have some stray clouds. They will linger into tonight and into tomorrow. But for the most part, they'll be clearing out and will be really clear as we get into the next couple of days. Let's take a look at our satellite and radar and show you what we have in the area. This is from 115 this afternoon. Again, you'll see a few clouds here and there when you look to the heavens, but for the most part, we will be mostly clear into tonight, into tomorrow. A look at our future cast shows the low pressure system coming in from the East Pacific, uh, not doing a whole lot for us other than giving us a little more heat. Again, we're going to be into the 90s for the next couple of days, but look at the Midwest and the East really cold up there. They're actually seeing some snow as we take a look at the extended satellite and radar. You can see the snow over here. I'm going to pop back and forth a little bit. Snow there in the Midwest. We've got some storms here. Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, also some rain on the East Coast. That Seattle area, well, uh, a mix of snow and rain in the Pacific Northwest. Where we are here, future winds 
We're still light, uh, single digits, and that will continue tonight into tomorrow. Not the gusty winds we had uh, over the last week or so. So we're going to be nice, easy, and breezy into tomorrow. A look at our air quality index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. Good all the way through the valley and on down to Mexicali, exactly where we want to be. Taking a look at our current temperatures, here's where we currently stand throughout the Imperial Valley. 84 Imperial, 87 El Centro, 86 in Holtville and Palo Verde. And across the county and state line into the Gila Valley, also known as Yuma County, Arizona. 85 in Yuma, 85 in the foothills along with San Luis and Summer Real quickly, a look at your seven day forecast. Breezy again tomorrow, warmer. There come that stretch of 90s for you, Arlette, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday into the weekend. Clouds gone until Monday and Tuesday. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. Clearing out tomorrow, many days of sun, five in a row, warmer, dry, and then mild. And then those clouds again return next Monday and Tuesday. But another stretch of 90s starting tomorrow. Thanks, Scott. I'm always telling him I want the weather cloud, the weather gods to talk to me here. Next on 13 on your side, some parents prepare to get their little ones vaccinated against COVID-19. Breaking news first. Extreme weather first. Border issues first. Agriculture first. Exclusive stories first. If it affects you, your family, your wallet, or your health. 13 on your side. First at four. Join Mercedes Martinez. 13 on your side. It's all first at 4 p.m. Welcome to 13 on your side. Affordable? Yeah, we got that. Stylish? Got that covered, too. Quality? You can bet on it. And during the Veterans Day sale at Furniture Row, you'll find sale prices throughout the store. Plus, five years, no interest. The Veterans Day sale, on now at Furniture Row. Did you know breast cancer kills more than 41,000 people every year in the U.S.? That's 113 people every day. That's unacceptable. African-American women die from breast cancer, nearly 41% more than Caucasian women. That's unacceptable. Nearly 250,000 men and women in the U.S. will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. That's unacceptable. Breast cancer is the leading cause of all cancer deaths for Hispanic women. Breast cancer is unacceptable. 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 Help us save lives. Together with Susan G. Komen, we're committed to reducing U.S. breast cancer deaths by half. And we're going to do it by 2026. Support Susan G. Komen. Join our fight. Save lives. Visit Komen.org slash unacceptable. Failure is unacceptable. Looking for great sleep at a great price? Denver Mattress has you covered. And during the Veterans Day sale, check out the Summit Firm for only $299.99. Plus, five years no interest and free shipping. Say goodbye to sleepless nights and shop Denver Mattress today. back happening now CDC advisors are talking about COVID-19 vaccines for children ages 5 to 11. If the committee recommends these vaccines for that age group shots could be administered after the CDC's director signs off on the recommendation but the work to get shots in little arms is already underway. In today's Health Minute Mandy Gaither tells us millions of doses for kids are already being shipped out. It's a moment many parents and pediatricians have been waiting for. It's very, very vital that ch children get vaccinated against COVID uh, so that we can put this pandemic uh, fortunately behind us. This COVID-19 vaccine formulated for around 28 million U.S. kids ages 5 to 11 is already being shipped out. We began the process of moving 15 million doses from Pfizer's freezers and facilities to distribution centers. There, millions of doses are being packed with dry ice and tracking labels before they're loaded into small specialized shipping containers. The FDA's emergency use authorization issued Friday for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine in younger children allowed that to happen. But even before the authorization, top U.S. health officials were preparing. We asked states, pharmacies, and community health centers to place their initial orders and submit their detailed distribution plans. 
The orange label indicates it's a dose for kids ages 5 to 11, only a third of what's given to those 12 and older. The doses are being placed in trucks and airplanes and sent to more than 20,000 locations. Over the next couple of days, several million doses will start arriving at local pediatricians and family doctors' offices, pharmacies, children's hospitals, community health centers, rural health clinics, and other locations. And the White House says more doses will be packed and delivered each day over the next week as more sites come online. And the U.S. puts a focus on protecting younger children. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. If the CDC recommends the vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11, White House officials say the vaccination program for that age group will be fully up and running starting the week of November 8th. Officials say parents will be able to visit vaccines.gov to find a nearby vaccine site for their child to schedule an appointment. And this while, according to the Associated Press, the Arizona Supreme Court upholds the ruling that finds the legislature unconstitutionally put a ban on school mask mandates in the budget. And coming up, a building collapse in Nigeria and search efforts are underway. Affordable? Yeah, we got that. Stylish? Got that covered, too. Quality? You can bet on it. And during the Veterans Day sale at Furniture Row, you'll find huge savings on living, dining, bedroom, and mattresses. Plus, decorating your home just got easier with five years no interest. And to salute our armed forces, all veterans and active duty military get a special in-store offer. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. The Veterans Day sale, on now at Furniture Row. You've got a landlord who clearly doesn't want you there. Things escalate. He has a tendency to, like, yell and be aggressive with me. And that's when she pulled the screwdriver on me. It was doomed from the start. Hot bench. Every year you've welcomed us into your homes. Introduced us to your family and friends. And included us in your festivities. You've played with us, won with us, and together, we've built a tradition of giving back to our communities. I, I won! So this holiday season, let's continue the tradition and celebrate together. We all smoked in those days. If that was you then, get your lungs screened now. This is a sport of the people. They decide if you'll be remembered. So make them remember. And a high-rise luxury apartment collapsed in Lagos, Nigeria, raising fears that people may be trapped under the rubble. Stephanie Basari reports on the latest in the search from Lagos. Anger and confusion in Lagos's affluent Ikoi neighborhood. After a luxury apartment building under construction for the past two years collapsed, turning 22 stories into a heap of concrete rubble, trapping an unknown number of people beneath the wreckage. No way. We've waited for like four to five hours now. Locals upset with what they say was a slow response by authorities, digging in the rubble by hand to find survivors. Telling CNN they pulled at least three people from the rubble before rescue teams arrived. The Lagos State Emergency Management Agency says it activated its emergency response plan, sending excavation equipment to the scene. The Nigerian Red Cross now on site assisting authorities and rescue teams in the search for more survivors. But so far, only the death toll is rising. But authorities say they aren't giving up hope. Yeah, for now, the rescue mission is on and all of us are on death. And we are not leaving until we get to ground zero. Building collapses in Nigeria have increased in recent years, often due to lack of adherence to regulatory controls poor knowledge of construction and substandard building materials. The cause of this incident, so far unknown. The technical officers now, the site engineers now, the government engineers, they will now meet and find out what is the cause. Therefore now, what you have to is to rescue 
lives that are there. It's been several hours since this building collapsed in Lagos, trapping many people underneath. Those numbers still unconfirmed, rescue efforts ongoing, but looking increasingly unlikely that there will be survivors found in this rubble. Caltrans has provided us with an update on some road work. Westbound I-8 at Imperial Avenue will reopen on Thursday. However, the Imperial Avenue Bridge access just south of Ocotillo remains closed through December. Partial lane closures will continue overnight and during the day as needed. Caltrans also reminds drivers to be mindful of construction zone speed limits while in the area. And a cornhole tournament is scheduled for November 6th at the Martinez Lake Resort. There will be raffles, prizes, music, and face painting. Entry is $20 and includes lunch. This tournament is in support of the Martinez Lake Fire Department. Coming up next on 13 on your side, hazardous material at MCAS Yuma. But don't worry, it's a drill. So you were saying Yuma Pest has driven you out of the homes you were in? Definitely. Me and hundreds of my family had to pack up and leave. But before, this wasn't a problem. <laughs> Not at all. Anything the other guys did was never a problem. And how did you say I could get a hold of them? I didn't. Right. For the best pest control in the desert southwest, call Yuma Pest today. Or find us online at yumapest.com. Yuma's best. Yuma Pest. Every picture has a story. At Doctors Without Borders, it's our mission to change those stories. Because thousands of children are still dying of measles. We're there with preventative medical care. Because every day, hundreds of women die from causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. We're there to assist hundreds of thousands. Because in some countries, there are only one or two mental health professionals. We're there to provide support, counseling, and clinical care. It's your care and compassion that make this happen. Picture the impact we can have together. Those were the days. We cruise down drags with our favorite bands. And every night we had standing dates with the same friends. We hustled, we bumped, we bus stopped, and we smoked all the time. If that was you then, get your lungs screened now. Visit screenyourlungs.org today. Now on 13 On Your Side, loved ones searching for a San Diego woman in Imperial. And two families reach a settlement in the Kobe Bryant plane crash incident. 13 On Your Side starts right now. Thank you for joining us on 13 On Your Side. I'm Arlette Youssef in for Mercedes. Thankfully, the video you are about to see was just a drill. MCAS fire units responded to a call about a man who crashed his vehicle, causing cylinders carrying chlorine to leak, or excuse me, causing chlorine to leak. While the firefighters knew there was a drill this morning, they did not know what the circumstances would be. While a few mistakes were made, Protection Officer Earl Hamilton said that it's all part of the learning process and that overall today was a success. We're going to be better next time. We're obviously going to go back and we're going to take these, uh, these uh, uh, videos and, and our uh, controller and evaluator uh, line items, and then we'll just make ourselves better. But we can't be afraid to go out there and practice and make a few mistakes. These types of drills happen about once a quarter to maintain training protocols. And for the latest in news and weather, download the KYMA app available in the App Store.
Teams are concentrating on desert areas east of San Diego in Imperial County in their ongoing search for the remains of Chula Vista mother Maya Milletti. Fish Creek in the Anza Borrego Desert is where relatives of Maya Miliete fanned out with about 30 search volunteers on Saturday looking for the missing woman's remains. Yeah, we are searching for a needle in a haystack. Um, the desert, it never ends. Maya's brother-in-law, Richard Droulet, says the missing woman would off-road here with her husband, Larry Miliete, who has now been charged with his wife's murder. It's been almost 10 months since the mother of three was last seen. I mean, honestly, at this point, we're probably just looking for clothing and bones. The district attorney says Larry Miliete was driving a black Lexus SUV with a personalized plate, Melani, on January 8th, when he is suspected of dumping his wife's body approximately two and a half hours from the family's home in Chula Vista. Okay, do you have any plans to go out to the Salton Sea area or back to Glamis? Yeah, we're moving that way. We're moving eastward, northeast, uh, all that area, about two and a half hours from Larry's house. That's where we're focusing our searches from now on. Come on, Mommy! Larry, Maya, and their three children went camping with relatives in the Glamis sand dunes the weekend before she went missing. This map shows the location of four Border Patrol checkpoints seen in red equipped with license plate reading cameras. The route to Glamis on Interstate 8 avoids the cameras on the way out but not on the way back because the cameras only capture westbound vehicles. The main route to Salton Sea passes two checkpoints with cameras, but those license plate readers can be avoided if a driver takes northern routes through either Julian or Borrego Springs. Search teams started focusing on the Salton Sea area after Larry Miliete allegedly called his children from jail and told them to watch a movie called Shot Caller. The film makes several references to the Salton Sea with remote abandoned shorelines and vast wilderness areas surrounded by sand dunes. We'll be out here for the season until we bring Maya home to her kids. And our temperatures fluctuating just a little bit. Earlier in the newscast, we were at 84 in Yuma. Now we're at 85. We were at 88 in El Centro. Now we're down to... 87, and that is above average for this time of year. Our average in Yuma is 82, in the uh, Imperial Valley is 83. So we're a little above that, and we will continue to get even warmer than that as we get into the week. Right now, let's take a look outside, shall we? The RV World of Yuma Skycam, still the hustle and bustle out there in downtown Yuma. That is 4th Avenue South. Slight uh, haze off into the distance when you're looking off into the mountain range, and a few clouds out there too. We're mostly sunny. Those clouds will start to leave the area as we get into tonight and into tomorrow. Now coming up in your first alert forecast, we're going to, well, that's not what we're going to see. Uh, we're going to talk more about the sunshine. Now, you've got a little sneak peek of what's coming on here. Uh, a lot of sunshine as those clouds will move. We'll also take a look at uh, a viewer photo that I want to share with you. I know I, I said that earlier on the program. That is coming. And when those clouds clear out, clear out it'll be a fantastic night to do some stargazing. How long will that last? All of this coming up in just a little bit. Scott, thanks. Well, Los Angeles County has settled a lawsuit in the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant and his daughter. Tuesday, the County Board of Supervisors unanimously, unanimously excuse me, approved settlements for the Altobelli and Mouser families. Each family will receive $1.25 million. Christina Mouser, as well as John, Carrie, and Alyssa Altobelli were on board when the helicopter went down back in January of 2020. The family sued over leaked photos of the crash. Kobe Bryant's widow, Vanessa Bryant, has also filed a federal lawsuit against the county. The lawsuit continues to move forward. Monday, a judge ruled Bryant will not have to undergo a psychiatric evaluation despite the county's request, calling it untimely. The Yuma County Sheriff's Office has informed us that a level three sex offender has moved to a Yuma neighborhood near West Glen Avenue. Salvador Cuevas Cortez was convicted of a sex crime in 2009. He is not wanted currently by the Yuma County Sheriff's Office. Coming up next, Mr. Food. See what he's cooking today, right after the break. 
when kids need medical care, they will often face stressful and life-changing experiences. They miss out on the things that make being a kid fun. Starlight Children's Foundation has delivered happiness to 17 million seriously ill kids and their families at more than 800 children's hospitals and healthcare facilities. Our programs entertain and inspire hospitalized kids. Learn more at starlight.org. That's starlight.org. When searching for your dream home, it's important to figure out what style of home you like. Victorian, cottage, Tudor. It's also important to protect your home and all the dreams that come with it. When looking for your dream home, keep in mind good things come in pairs, like dual sinks, Jonathan and me. And pairing your home and auto insurance, which can get you one step closer to achieving your dream. Pretty sure people call it bundling. Bundle your home and auto insurance and save up to 28%. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. Looking for work? IBROP Project Connect can help. Under 25, not attending school, or unemployed? Sign up today. We offer paid work experience, employment preparation, and work readiness, high school diploma and GED tutoring, paid workshops, vocational training, and much more. Virtual services are also available. To sign up, call us today at 760-482-2627 or visit one of your local Imperial County America's job centers. IVROP Project Connect. Sign up today. Those were the days. We cruised down drags with our favorite bands. And every night we had standing dates with the same friends. We hustled, we bumped, we bus stopped. And we smoked all the time. If that was you then, get your lungs screened now. Visit ScreenYourLungs.org today. Touchdown! Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. Today's Ag Minute, looking at current agriculture headlines. I'm Clinton Griffiths with today's Ag Day Minute. More than 80 nations are teaming up to cut methane emissions. The announcement coming out of the COP26 World Leaders Summit in Scotland. The U.S. among those taking part. President Biden announcing a new effort to stop methane leaks from oil and gas drilling. Now, the EPA estimates the new effort would cut 41 million tons of emissions from 2023 to 2035. That's more greenhouse gas than all the carbon dioxide from U.S. cars and commercial airplanes in 2019. You might not see as many frozen turkeys in the grocery store this year ahead of Thanksgiving. That's because inventories are down about 24% from average. Now stocks of frozen turkey meat usually building throughout the year until the fall. That's when retailers get ready to meet holiday demand. But right now there's less of a buildup and that's because production of turkeys is lower this year. And astronauts on board the International Space Station recently got to dine on tacos in space, complete with green chili that was grown right on board the space station. Now they started growing the hatch chilies in July in an effort to learn more about plant microbe interactions. Astronauts have grown other food in space before, but this was their first time trying peppers because they can take a long time to germinate and bear fruit. For more Ag News, watch Ag Day weekdays on the station or anytime at agweb.com. And now that it's almost dinner time, let's take a look at today's top food recipe with Mr. Food. Have you ever eaten something that you just didn't like? For me, it used to be rice pudding. The one time I had it as a kid, you know, the rice was hard and the pudding part was far from creamy. That all changed recently when I tried a new recipe for creamy rice pudding that Patty from our test kitchen created. You know, it was so good, I knew I had to share it with you. The big difference with the recipe that Patty made compared to others I've had was that she made hers with medium grain rice versus long grain rice. This makes hers more tender and the starch adds to the creaminess. To make it, we cook the rice like normal until all the water is absorbed and set it aside. Then, in a large saucepan, we combine some milk, sugar, salt, and the rice and cook it, stirring it continuously. 
When it thickens, we stir in more milk and an egg and let it simmer for a few more minutes before adding some butter and a splash of vanilla. When it comes to serving this, you can put it in a bowl and let everyone help themselves. Or you can dish it up shooter style. Add a little tiramisu topping to these and make them extra special. To get the recipe for our really good rice pudding, as well as our tiramisu rice pudding shooters, simply visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a creamy, dreamy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Hey everybody, have you ever noticed that one of the hardest things in the world is getting your kids to take a nap? Now it's ironic because as an adult, I would love nothing more <laughs> than a nap, but kids have so much energy and they feel like they're going to miss out on something. So it's hard to get them to just calm down, lay down, take a nap. And that's one of the reasons that Happy Nappers was created. So these are Happy Nappers. And you can see we have two different sizes um, for, of course, different age kids. And this is going to be a super soft faux fur character, really, really cute. This is what your child is going to use to nap. This is how you're going to encourage them to take a nap because it's one of their favorite, favorite, favorite toys that is going to be a pillow. And then this unzips and it comes down into a sleeping bag. It's machine washable. It's super cozy. Now they're going to have their place to nap and they can be, they can nap different places. They can nap on the couch. They can nap on the floor in the playroom. They can take this to grandma's house. They can take it to daycare. This is their little happy place and it goes with them. There is nothing more important than keeping your kids regular when it comes to sleeping and eating. This can help with the sleeping part. It is their little place. It is their little friend. It is their little nap. Right now on localsteals.com, we have a very special offer on happy nappers and lots of options to choose from. So if you know someone you'd love to get a great gift for, or if you know a kid who really needs to take a nap, these are gonna be absolutely perfect. Spectrum Mobile gives you speed plus reliability. Switch and you can save up to 40% and get unlimited talk, text, and data, all with no added taxes and fees and no contracts. Visit SpectrumMobile.com. Yes. Yes. Okay, so what kind of filming are you doing? There are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. The Yuma Regional Bicycle Coalition invites you to participate in the Tour de Fields in Agricultural Bicycle event on November 6th at 9 a.m. There will be a 52-mile, 30-mile, 10-mile, and a 5K course. This family-friendly event will guide you through Yuma's agriculture. November 6th at 9 a.m. at Summerton's Council Park. Register at tourdefields.com. Brought to you by these fine sponsors. The pros of one-hour air conditioning and heating remind you that an AC tune-up now can help to prevent breakdowns in the future. They're psychic. We're not. But we do know firsthand that a spring tune-up can help your system run better and last longer. You could see lower energy bills. See? Psychic. Oh, let's pick lottery numbers. I predict you won't win, Jim. All right. All right. Schedule your AC tune-up today. Your comfort is just a call away. Call one hour. When kids need medical care, they will often face stressful and life-changing experiences. They miss out on the things that make being a kid fun. Starlight Children's Foundation has delivered happiness to 17 million seriously ill kids and their families at more than 800 children's hospitals and healthcare facilities. Our programs entertain and inspire hospitalized kids. Learn more at starlight.org. That's starlight.org. Turning our attention to the weather, we're joined by weather forecaster Scott Gross once again, and we've had some nice weather as of late. How much longer will it continue? And did you talk to the weather gods <laughs> for me? Because I don't want it to heat up. <laughs> uh, I did, and uh, you have been trumped. Uh, it is going to warm up at least for the next week before we start a cool down. So there's a little bit 
something in there for everybody. I'll show you what I mean in just a little bit. Right now, I want to show you what we have outside. This is the RV World of Yuma Skycam. Really busy down there. That is 4th Avenue South. And we got some haze off in the distance. Uh, still some cloud cover as well. Uh, yeah, that CG is out of the way. So you can see uh, a very busy 4th Avenue South. Let's take a look right now at our satellite and radar show you what we have as far as uh, our area a lot of clouds have moved out to the area we are seeing a little bit of precipitation uh, right between Phoenix and Tucson that was from 145 this afternoon that's still moving across the southern portion of Arizona but where we are right now mostly clear again you're going to see some cloud cover out there that will continue into tonight our future cast shows this low pressure system moving in from the East Pacific Seattle uh, getting a mix of rain and snow in that area, also Vancouver area, the Midwest also uh, a little bit of a freeze uh, when you're looking at temperatures, also the eastern portion seeing a little bit of rain there as well. As we take a look right now at a, an extended view of our satellite and radar, you can see some showers moving through Kansas and Oklahoma. Also, look at what's happening on the east side, Washington to New York City and that Pacific Northwest. We're seeing rain in there. Also, the Midwest seeing a little bit of snow in northern Minnesota and into Wisconsin and into Michigan. But back here, looking at our wind scale. This is where we are right now. Single digits that will continue into tomorrow morning, into tomorrow afternoon. We'll have a little gust here and there right across the California-Arizona border. But for the most part, another uh, easy breezy day tomorrow. Our air quality index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. Still good all the way through the valley and on down to Mexicali, exactly where we want to be. Current temperatures look like this. First of all, in the Imperial Valley, 84, Salton City, 87, Ocotillo, 87 in El Centro and Holtville and across the county and state line into Arizona, Yuma County and the Gila Valley, 85 in Yuma, 87 in both San Luis and Somerton. Our reviewer photo of the day today comes from Pete Walker. Take a look at this from the Cactus Gardens RV Park. He captured just an amazing view of the sun and the colors. Thank you so much, Pete, for sending that. I like the, uh, the little golf cart that he's got there as well. If you have a photo, we certainly want to see it. Scan this QR code. It takes you right to the weather photo gallery from there. Upload your photo from your phone. Include your name, maybe a little description as well, or find me on social media, or even better yet, drop it off on our homepage, kyma.com slash share. Here's a look at your MetroCast for tonight. Again, mostly clear. 7 o'clock will be at 78 degrees tonight, midnight. Again, maybe some clouds out there. The sun will be right around 6% illuminated. So you'll see just a sliver of that. We'll be at 66 at midnight. And tomorrow when you wake up on your Wednesday, happy hump day, a sunny at 7 a.m. and 61. Here's your seven-day forecast. Breezy and warmer. Yeah, string of 90 degree days. I know Arlette is not happy about that. A lot of sunshine before the clouds move in after the weekend. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. Four straight days of 90. Then our cool down starts next Monday and Tuesday. We'll be below our average of 82. Scott, thanks so much. Well, coming up next, a chase suspect leaps from a five-story bridge and a nuclear sub runs into an underwater mountain. Coming up in today's Look at This. Next ET, fresh off her happy Halloween, our New York night out with Kim K. At the end of the day, life is about being happy. Plus, we're in the ballroom for Queen Night on Dancing with the Stars. I'm so excited. Then, we're turning up Hawaii Week 98 degrees. Nicholas Shea is back to guest co host. Where's the harmony, Kevin? I, don't even, I, <laughs> I will the kill the harmony. I will kill the harmony. Next ET. <laughs> We're on a mission to connect every Arizona service member, veteran, and their families to the support and resources they deserve to make sure that there are no barriers to the benefits and services earned through service to our country. Find out how we can assist you in Arizona. Visit connectveterans.org or call 866-4AZ-VETS right now to learn more. This message is brought to you by the Arizona Coalition for Military Families, the Arizona Department of Veteran Services, and Arizona's Be Connected Partners. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. The Bell & Howell Tac Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. Look, this civilian flashlight puts out pathetic light. But our military-grade Tac Light, that's 22 times as bright. It's so bright, it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. Only a Tac Light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. 
A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures, but even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our tack light stop working. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. You can get a Bell & Howell tack light complete with a lifetime guarantee for just $19.99 plus free shipping. And while supplies last, you can even get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. To order, call 1-800-369-0338. That's 1-800-369-0338 or go to trytacklight.com. What really matters in journalism? The truth matters. Facts matter. Getting to the heart of the story matters. It's what we do at CBS News, and it's our promise to you. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. A high-speed car chase that ends with a shocking jump from a bridge lands the leaping suspect in hot water, and it was all caught on camera. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. A dive into jail is what authorities in Lee County, Florida, called this video of a high-speed chase that came to an unexpected conclusion. It starts with authorities pursuing the driver of an allegedly stolen van on a bridge when suddenly the vehicle swerves erratically and crashes. That's when things get really crazy. As officials arrive, the suspect exits the vehicle and then does a diving flip off the five-story bridge into the river below. Evidently, that's where the suspect's plan ended because Fort Myers Marine Unit officials were dispatched and took him into custody shortly thereafter. The sheriff's office shared the video on social media saying he may not have earned a gold medal for his high dive, but he did find himself in hot water. An investigation in international waters involving a U.S. nuclear submarine had a startling development as officials revealed the USS Connecticut struck an uncharted underwater mountain in the South China Sea in early October. Believe it or not, a similar incident occurred in 2005 when the USS San Francisco struck an undersea mountain near Guam. Unlike that incident, the recent collision involving the USS Connecticut did not result in life-threatening injuries. Okay, time for a moment of zen. Check out these amazing images of the northern lights captured over Europe. Officials had predicted that a large solar flare could cause the aurora borealis to be highly visible over the Halloween weekend, and as you can see, it did not disappoint. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth.